Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Field T1XS, which I ranked number one in my top five under $60 Truewhilst earbud video. Because look, you're getting some amazing features, really solid sound, solid fit, you're getting a low latency mode, you're getting fast charge, you're getting an ambient mode, and a really solid app as well. Plus, these are like you can get them for under $60 US, around $80. For my Australians. But these aren't perfect, so make sure you watch all the way through today's video to make sure these are the right fit for you. But if you want to grab a pair, affiliate links are down in the description below with updated pricing, there's always coupons and deals flying around there. So be sure to check those links out. I'm also going to leave timestamps down below because look, my videos are on the longer side. But that's because we go in depth. So if you're picky with your audio, so am I. And I'm here to help. Let's get into another picky review. All right, starting with physical features and design, and we're working with some glossy plastics on the outside of the earbud, where your sexy feel logo is. I'm a big fan of that logo there. Uh, it feels really nice and sturdy, nice and premium. Smooth, hard plastics on the inside of the earbud, and kind of wrapping around the middle part of the earbud there. You've got some silicone wingtip action, and you have two sizes there, or you can have one size, which doesn't have a wingtip on there, so you keep that nice grippy feel also makes it really easy to handle these earbuds. You've also got an indicator light on the top of the earbud, no unnecessary flashing when music is playing, and when they're paused, no flashing as well. I'm a fan of that. And overall size here, uh, they're not super compact, but they are, they're they more compact than some competitors like the Soundpeats 3SE, the H1, which uh, allows for some really, really nice, secure, comfortable fitting buds. That didn't really make sense, but I'm just gonna keep that in. <laughs> Hello, bird. Chop, 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 chop. You're getting four sizes of ear tips and the second largest worked the best for me and the larger wing tip also worked better for me because I've got some pretty big ear canals. The fit here is on the deeper side, but combine this with the wing tip, you're getting really good security. Fine for any kind of training, running, weight training, no issues, uh, vigorous dancing. There's no way these are gonna budge. There's no way these are gonna fall out. And due to their size as well, they're pretty compact. The ergonomics here are really good. So I can wear these for just about over two hours before I get any discomfort. But keep in mind, I get discomfort with any in-ear earbud after like two hours. The only real con here with the fit is I notice when weight training, you know, I'm clenching my teeth through a hard set. The earbuds kind of move around and because with this fit here, it's like it's got a bit of a suction feeling to it. So I notice like the sound quality kind of changes a bit when I'm near the end of a set and I'm kind of grinding through it there. Not, not deal breaking, but I, I just want to let you guys know uh, my picky perspective. If you like using your earbuds when training, we're rocking an IPX5 rating here. So if you get nice and sweaty like me, you're all good. Fine to use in the rain, you just can't submerge the buds in water. All right, onto case and battery life. And you're getting an advertised 24 hours total with the case and the earbuds just six hours from the earbuds themselves. Uh, and in my testing at 70% volume, I've got five hours and 58 minutes. So really good, pretty much right on point for the advertised battery life. And that is at 70% volume. So you get an additional three charges from the case for the buds. You're also getting some fast charge action. So charge the buds for 10 minutes, you're getting two hours of playback. There is no wireless charging here. It's pretty much the only feature and noise canceling that you don't get here. Uh, but these charge via USB-C with the cable included. You're getting a pretty compact case here as well. Easily pocketable, nice and small. It's made out of the same glossy plastics on the outside of the earbud, but I still find it's completely fine to handle. It's nice and sturdy. Build quality feels really solid here. You've only got one indicator light on the outside of the case and that'll flash different colors to let you know if the case needs charging. I prefer having a couple more LEDs, but uh, just a minor gripe there. Once you open the lid of the case, that's when the earbuds will start connecting to your phone. So really quick, they'll connect in under like five seconds. This also means that you need to close the lid for the earbuds to disconnect there. And in terms of handling them due to that silicone action on the ear tip, really easy to take in and out of the case. The magnets aren't super strong, but they'll, they'll do the job. So overall, good stuff with the case, good stuff with the battery life. All right, onto touch controls and overall really good stuff here, solid sensitivity. You can control everything once you've downloaded the app because there's an easy mode and there's like a full control mode. I'll put up all the controls here. So you can control everything. It's a little bit different to most true wireless earbuds. So it would have been nice to be able to customize that, but look, at least you can control everything here. You can also change the sensitivity of the touch controls in the app, which is pretty cool. Don't really see that around on too many true wireless earbuds. Is also have auto pause and play, which you can also turn on and off in the app which I normally turn off, so it's nice to be able to do that on these buds here. Quick hold in the left earbud will activate your ambient mode. Uh, so you can kind of pump in your surroundings so you can know what's going on around you. And pretty good here, it's slightly amplified. It doesn't sound too natural, but look, it'll do the job. 
But a big pro here is that when adjusting touch controls, as well as volume, you get a subtle beep in the earbud to let you know that you've actually activated the touch control, which I'm a huge fan of. I like to, I like to get a bit of feedback uh, with my touch controls. All right, onto Bluetooth and connectivity and got the usual suspects. Bluetooth 5.0, SBC and AAC codecs. In terms of latency, even with the low latency mode not turned on, barely any on YouTube and Netflix. This is tested on an iPhone 12, but chuck on the low latency mode, especially when gaming, it's like using a wide pair of earbuds. Really good stuff. And you also get some options on the app uh, to change latency dependent on the media you're viewing. So this is pretty cool because I've noticed some other earbuds have tested such as the Soundpeats H1, which just have one low latency mode. So that worked really well for gaming, but it didn't work too well in watching like YouTube and Netflix. So nice to have some more options there. In terms of Bluetooth range, I got 100% in my outdoor test. Not many earbuds get 100% and this is across 27 meters. In a clear open space, in my indoor test, I got 90% just on average for competition there. That's across 17 meters, downstairs, upstairs, through about five walls. You can also use either the left or right earbud individually, and this works in mono mode. So if you're just using one earbud, you'll hear both audio channels coming out of that earbud. It's really nice to see that there. And in terms of overall connection, no issues, no dropouts, smooth sailing overall with the connection. All right, onto the microphone test. Really decent stuff here. Pretty much on average for the competition in this price range, but I'll put up some tests here so you can hear for yourself. All right, so here's a microphone test with the Feel T1XS, and this is what it sounds like with the crowd noise played off my computer speakers to mimic a noisy environment. All right, here we are in the outside world. We've got some cars zooming past right now. A little bit windy. There's also another highway behind this road here, so hope that the mics are picking up my voice quite well. All right, before moving on to sound quality, quick little drop of my Instagram so you can stay updated with some behind the scenes action of Picky Audio and my audio ventures. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below. All right, onto how they sound and as usual, we're starting with volume here. Uh, these are currently the second loudest pair of earbuds I own uh, coming in just behind the Soundpeats H1. You get about one more notch on the H1 of volume, but honestly, 100% volume, we are in deaf territory. You shouldn't be listening to 100% volume for too long so you don't lose your hearing. If you are looking for low level listening, you're, you're sort of getting it here at the lowest volume. Uh, I say this could be like a little bit quieter if you wanna look for some bedtime listening there. Slight con though, there is some, there's some white noise action here, which you will notice at those lower volumes. I honestly don't mind it too much. Uh, it's, it's definitely there, it's noticeable, but like sometimes the white noise, it's pretty annoying. Here it's like, it's, it's honestly not too bad. It's just a minor con there, definitely not a deal breaker unless you just can't stand that white noise action. Passive noise isolation here with that deep fit, also really good. I would say on par with like the Soundpeats H1, which I would say have pretty much the best passive noise isolation out there in the true wireless world. All right, onto how these sound and my current number one earbud for, for my kind of taste of a nice amount of bass, nice amount of clarity, are still the Soundpeats H1. You probably might've seen that in my review. If you can check that out, check out that video there. Uh, but these are gonna come in at number two. Again, still beating the likes of buds like the Bose Quiet Comforts and like the Sony XM3s. Because when it comes to bass, you're getting a nice, tasty amount here. It's all, I would say it's almost like bass head certified. You're getting a nice, decent amount. It hits pretty deep. Not as deep as the Soundpeats H1, but overall, nice amount of bass there. In terms of the mid-range, really solid here, not like mind-blowing. This is where pairs like the AirPods Pro, Bose QuietComfort, Sony XM3s do have a slightly more clear, better mid-range, but still the T1XS here, just slightly behind there. So vocals come through really well, male and female, and you get nice impact on your percussion as well. But the star of the show here has to be the treble. If you like some nice, crisp and bright treble, the T1XS has you sorted out here. You get nice direct sound when it comes to hi-hats, ride cymbals, snare snaps, all that kind of stuff. It can get a little bit harsher at the higher volumes. Uh, so this is where I, I still prefer the Soundpeats H1 slightly held back uh, treble. It really comes down to a bit of personal preference here. Still really good stuff. In terms of sound stage, how big that sound is, these are also really good. Slightly behind the H1, they've still got a little bit of a wider sound, but when it comes to sound imaging as well, I find that the H1, again, slightly better. The T1XS just coming in just slightly behind there. It's really close though when comparing these two. So overall there, in terms of like the bass to clarity ratio, yeah, these are, these are pretty much my second favorite earbud that I've tested so far. But keep in mind, this is just with the stock EQ. On the app, you have some customization options there when it comes to your EQ. You've got a treble setting, which kind of brings the bass down quite a bit. 
obviously bumps up the treble in the mids a little bit. I don't really use that, but the bass boost mode, it really bumps up the low end there, uh, pretty much making these like bass head certified, I would say. Still, uh, an EQ can only help so much, so the bass still doesn't hit as deep as the Soundpeats H1, but like really great, really nice to have some more customization there. And with the bass boost setting on, it also kind of brings down the treble slightly, but overall you still get a nice amount of clarity and it kind of allows you to listen to more of those high volumes without that treble being as harsh. So I kind of, I find myself, especially when training, I chuck on this bass boost mode and it, it really gets me going. You also have some other options there for EQ, but I find that it kind of degrades the sound quality a little bit. And you also have some custom EQ stuff there, but I found the presets has made it sound uh, as best as it could. So you got the treble, the original, and the bass boost uh, sounding the best there. You also have a DSP setting, which you can turn on and off. Uh, I didn't really notice a huge difference turning this on and off, but uh, it's there. Also, I just want to quickly touch up on the app because I pretty much mentioned it throughout the video here. But in terms of just how good this app works, I've had not one issue in terms of connecting the earbuds to the app. They connect automatically every single time. And this is in the last, like, I've probably had these for about two months where I compare it to pairs like the Bose Quiet Comforts. I still can't get the app, the app to work for some reason. Uninstalled it, reinstalled it. Uh, the Sony app as well, really good app, but sometimes the earbuds just won't connect. I use an iPhone, so and, um, Android could be different, but... The Feel app here, whatever you guys are doing, killing it, most most reliable app at the moment, I would say. All right, back to the sound, and so I can explain the sound a little bit further, let's run through my classic genre rating checklist. It's a bit tricky when the earbud has uh, an EQ, so this will be based off the stock original setting. And look, honestly, with the original setting, I'd pretty much give everything a nine out of 10, except for, for hip hop, R&B, trap, dubstep, and techno, because I find a little bit more bass for those genres would be better, but then of course you've got the option to just turn that on, which I would say would pretty much bump up everything to a nine out of 10, but I just wanna quickly touch up on a few genres here to explain a bit further. So yeah, EDM, pop and radio, just a great amount of bass there, great amount of clarity since come through really well, and so do the vocals as well. Like I mentioned, hip hop R&B on original setting, eight out of 10, a bit deeper bass, I honestly prefer, but chuck on the, the bass boost and you're pretty much getting a nice fat amount of bass, really nice stuff there. With metal, one of my favorite genres, you get a nice amount of bass, giving you that nice heavy live sound and really nice clarity overall with all the craziness that is metal. Pretty much the same with rock there as well. You're getting a nice heavy impact with your distorted guitars, with your drums, everything comes through nice and heavy. Indian acoustic, it's pretty close to a 10 out of 10 there. That really decent treble works really well. It just kind of get a little bit harsher, again, at high volumes on some tracks as well. Uh, this is pretty much the same with jazz, a lot of horns, a lot of percussion, ride cymbals. It all sounds really nice and combine everything for classical. He's getting a nice, big, deep, rich sound when it comes to your classical tracks. Hard style, it's also like with original on, really good. Chuck on bass boost. Again, we're pretty much on the edge of a 10 out of 10 territory. I thought I couldn't really give a 10 out of 10 here. I did give this for some genres on the H1. I've given this for some genres on the Quiet Comforts and the Sonys as well. Uh, but still, overall, just with that bass here, uh, that's why overall in the genre rating checklist, this is pretty much getting the second highest score I've ever given behind the H1. Trap and dubstep, original, eight out of 10. Chuck on your bass boost. Pretty close to a 10 out of 10 there. You get a nice punchy sound, nice sub bass kicking through, uh, nice impact with your synths there. Sidetrance works best with the original setting because the bass boost kind of overpowers the bass, takes away from the, the synth and the craziness that is uh, your Sidetrance. Regular trance, original sounds probably a little bit better. That punchy sound works really well. Synths come through really well as well as your vocals. And techno, yeah, with that bass boost, better with like your acid if you like listen to your, it's a nice heavy techno uh the original setting better with like your tech house uh your tropical house whatever kind of techno you like to listen to you got some options there symphonic metal probably better on the original setting here as well really nice heavy sound that you would get with your metal and orchestration uh has some room to come through really nice as well and does it a gent of course it does you get a nice heavy sound whether you use bass boost or original so look really good balanced sound if you like your bass as well is going to work pretty much great with any genre, any kind of media throw at it. And sure, for me, I still prefer the sound of the H1, but keep in mind, these are like $30 cheaper and you're also getting more features. So you're getting the ambient mode, you're getting quick charge, a better microphone, a more compact case and an app as well. So look, uh, if you're just in it for just sound quality, I'd go for the H1 personally, but honestly, it's really close with those extra features. It definitely makes the T1XS uh, a little bit more appetizing, you could say. Honestly, they're, they're pretty hard to fault, especially for the price you're paying. The only real main cons uh, is that slight white noise, which I don't find too annoying and you get a bit of suction 
uh, with the fit when training and like clenching your teeth and that kind of stuff. Apart from that, you're getting amazing value here. And now you can probably see why I rank these number one in my top five under $60 video and why I've called these the best value earbuds of 2020. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, please chuck a like down there, comment any questions, earbud requests, just go down there and say hello if you want. I try to reply to all comments there, so don't be shy. Please subscribe, hit the bell button. Make sure you're staying updated because I've got videos coming out every week. But in the meantime, stay tuned. And of course, stay picky with your audio because life's too short for crappy sound. See you in the next video. Bye now.